Max Holloway fires back at MMA community Max Holloway caused a stir among MMA fans when he spoke earlier this month to TNT Sports about his plans to once again compete at lightweight and his upcoming bout at UFC 300. The former featherweight champion is making the move up to 155 ulves to take on Justin Gagey, the BMF belt, and he told TNT Sports, I feel like I was on this earth to fight. If I was born in a different time, probably would have been a gladiator. And last time I checked, gladiators didn't walk around with a scale, asking what weight you was. If you're a BMF, you're going to step up and fight anybody. Some fans responded negatively to these comments and pointed out that Holloway could possibly be a little overconfident in the run-up to the fight Holloway fired back at those doubters this week on his YouTube channel. He's got a lot of time to prepare for this. The first fight when he fought 55, when he fought Dustin, that was a short notice fight. He didn't have time to like really bulk up. Like, well, I don't know how short notice it was, but I know he didn't bulk up. He, I think he just tried to fight, you know, just be 145 but not cut weight, you know, which is his natural weight class. Who's in the world? Bless has competed in the lightweight division once before when he lost an interim title battle against Dustin Poirier. Back in April of 2019, the defeat may have swayed the opinion of some fans in the lead-up to UFC 300, but Joe Rogan is of the opinion that Holloway could be better prepared for the step up in weight class. This time around speaking on a recent episode of his podcast, the JRD experience, he said he he's got a lot of time to prepare for this. The first fight when he fought 55, when he fought Dustin, that was a short notice fight. He didn't have time to like really bulk up. Like, well, I don't know how short notice it was, but I know he didn't bulk up. He, I think he just tried to fight, you know, just be 145 but not cut weight, you know, which is his natural weight class. Who's in the world? Holloway certainly seems confident in his preparations this time around, but hasn't yet announced if he'll move permanently to the 155 pounds division or return to featherweight in other UFC Jamahal Hill. Revi ALs P lands after UFC 300 fight. 300 News Jamal Hill reveals plans after UFC 300 fight Jamal Hill is scheduled to make his return after injury when he takes on Alex Pada in the main event of UFC 300 next month. Hill captured the 205 pounds title in January of 2023 when he beat Glover Tora in the decision victory. After five rounds, he then suffered a serious Achilles tendon injury a few months later and voluntarily relinquished the belt as he stepped away from the sport to focus on his rehabilitation in a surprising turn of events. It was announced last month that Sweet Dreams is ready for a return to the octagon and will face current champion Pa as he bids to reclaim the crown he never lost after such a prolonged period of inactivity. It seems that Hill is not only setting his sights on the championship bout with Paha, but also on the next possible contender for the crown. Speaking to Michael Bisping on the Believe You Me podcast, Hill stated that Yuri Prohaska could be next in line, assuming he can defeat Alexander Rekic at UFC 300. I think if Yuri goes out and he knocks Rakic out in an impressive fashion, you know, and gets uh, has a good performance, that's still a fight that I want. You know, I, I still, I still, I still want that fight, but um, it's got to make sense. So, and I think if he, him going out and knocking out Rakic, could make that make sense. Prasa held the belt before Hill, but was also forced to vacate after suffering a long-term I. He returned at UFC 295 to face B for the vacant title, but was stopped in the second round by the Brazilian, a decision Hill seemingly disagreed with moving now to the Paddy Pimblet, gets roasted in interview. Lightweight division Patty Pimp gets roasted in interview Mike Davis has been turning some heads in the UFC's 155 pounds division over the course of his last few fights Beast Boy is now on a four fight win streak and the New Yorker has his sights set on a big name for his next fight speaking on Perry Punch on YouTube earlier this week Davis says he wants to square off against Patty Pimmel in his next fight, as he feels like the UFC owes him an easier matchup than the one he's been getting. Patty Pimblet makes the most sense because I have now entered the leaderboard on four fights in a row. Patty has five fights in a row, but Patty has not been given any up and comer. He's not been given, aside from uh, Gordon, right? But that's the only person he fought that actually matters. Tony Ferguson's on a six fight, was on a six fight losing streak, now seven fight losing streak. He's not gonna win, he's done. So they keep feeding this kid. They, they push him around in a baby stroller and 
feed him whatever he wants. Davis lost his UFC debut to Gilbert Burns back in 2019, but has since taken out Thomas Ford, Mason Jones, Veslav Borkiv, and Nan Levy, and he sees Pimpet as an easy fight in comparison to those he's already beaten recently. Some fans on social media aren't as convinced one tweeted with all due respect, Mike they just matched you up with Nadal Levy lull. Another chimed in with Mike who Patty the Bad is on a five-fight win streak inside the octagon, although he has yet to face a ranked opponent his unanimous decision victory over Jared Gordon at UFC 282 was certainly seen as controversial by a number of fans and an unconvincing performance against Tony Ferguson at UFC 296 doesn't seem to have convinced many of his qualities as a top-level fighter. Could we see Pimple vs. Davis in the rumored English pay-per-view card? Dana White's Ann & CDM Int. Fighter shocked by Dana White's announcement, the UFC announced this week that they will debut in Saudi Arabia later this year. Riot has become a very prominent host of elite-level boxing events over the past year, and now it seems that the global leader and MMA has finally joined the party. The main card was announced in full this week, topped by a fascinating bout in the midweight division between Hamza Cham and former champion Robert Whitaker. Other fights scheduled include a heavyweight contest between Sergey Pavlovich and an Alexander Vala, a welterweight matchup between Kelvin Gastelum and Daniel Rodriguez, and a fight at 205 albs between Johnny Walker and Vulcan Aimer. In an interesting turn of events, it's emerged that neither Sergey Pavlovich nor Alexander Vob have actually agreed to fight or sign a contract, and both teams were completely blindsided by the announcement. Strange news for us, said Pavlovich's manager, neither party have consent to the fight unclear situation. This is becoming quite a trend for the UFC as of late. There have been a handful of instances this year where they promoted a fight before. Any type of agreement has been put in place, most notably the UFC 299 co-main event between Dustin Poirier and Benoit Sandini, which was announced on January 10th, three weeks later. The Diamond spoke out telling media there was no actual agreement before the fight was announced, and we couldn't come to terms. Thankfully, both parties did get the paperwork in order, and that bout went ahead. But this latest revelation by Pavlovic's team shows the UFC may not have learned their lesson. Next up, Chris Weidman sends a Chris Weidman send his AMESSAG to Conor McGregor. Message to Conor McGregor, if Conor McGregor finally returns to the Octagon on International Fight Week to face Michael Chandler, it will have been more than three years at that point since his last fight, when he suffered a catastrophic injury during the first round of his bout with Dustin Poirier, the Notorious suffered a broken tibia and fibula, and while the Irishman has unofficially announced his return for this summer, we're still waiting official word from the UFC one fighter, who knows what it's like to come back from a serious leg break, is former UFC middleweight champion Chris Weidman, who spent more than two years out of action after breaking his leg during a about with Uriah Hall at UFC 261 in 2021 Weidman found it difficult to throw leg kicks in his return bout with Brad Tars in 2023 and believes there are some lessons in that fight that might be useful for McGregor when he steps back into the octagon. I know he watched my fight Weidman told MA Fighting. I think he probably learned a lot watching my fight some of the red flags of what to be prepared for for whoever he fights and also maybe you're not going to be able to throw back as much as you want or now be prepared that could be something you have to deal with so really train on kicking back because you want that to be second nature when you're in there for me I thought I was good with that but I wasn't after such an extended period of inactivity. There's certainly huge question marks hanging over McGregor's ability to perform in the octagon again. Dominic Reyes, R-E-V-A-L-O shocking and yus. Dominic Reyes reveals shocking news after a period spent dealing with a life-threatening health condition Former UFC title contender Dominic Reyes has been given the all-clear to return to competitive action. Reyes revealed two months ago that he came down with deep vein thrombosis shortly after his fight with Carlos Albert fell through he told Middle Easy back in January man, odd god god puts us through some trials man, I'm having another hard go right now, so uh me and Carlos were slated to fight January 20th, he pulled out I don't know why um and then a week later, I ended up getting blood clots deep vein thrombosis, so yeah, I'm out for a minute oh yeah, I'm 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 lucky to be alive right now. 
That's that's always nice, you know, we caught it early right, so uh, it didn't become a pulmonary embolism, and thank God for that. However, this week, he revealed in his Instagram that he's been given the go-ahead to resume resume his career after some treatment. Hey everyone, I just got out of my appointment at Victor Valley Imaging, yeah. I got a clean bill of health, no uh, evidence of deep vein thrombosis, any more pretty excited man. I just got to finish off uh, these next few days of blood dinners and I'm on good to go 100%. Thank you everybody for the kind words and love and reaching out and everything time to get back at it baby. Ready to go the devastator came into his title bout with John Jones back in 2020 as the proud owner of a 12-0 pro record. He lost a controversial decision to Jones that night and it's since lost his following three fights all by knockout to Yam Bovic. Yuri Prohaska and Ryan Span his last appearance came against Span in November of 2122 at just 34 years of age. The Californian will be hoping to convince fans that he still has some great performances left in his career. Joe Rogan sends a warning. Joe Rogan send his warning to Kamzat Shimev to Hamza Chimaya after it was announced that Hamza will take on Robert Whitaker at UFC Saudi Arabia Rogan believes that Whittaker is more dangerous than Camaro Usman when he fought Hamzat, given that Whittaker will have a full camp and not just a 10-day notice. Here's what Rogan had to say versus Hamza Jade in Saudi Arabia, that one is going to be wild bro Whittaker versus Hamzat is legit that's a real fight that's a real fight for Hammond, because Whittaker is a big dude, he's a big, I mean solid beefy 185 former champion, that's a real 185, as opposed to like you know they gave him Camaro Usman and Camaro, didn't have chance to prepare for that he had 10 days you know that's not enough time, I mean I mean I don't know what kind of shape he was in couldn't really test he's always in shape, famously, Camaro has bad knees so I don't know. How hard he was training, whether or not he prepares the way like maybe he only like sacrifices his knees during training, and then, when he's not training for a fight he takes it easy, so he doesn't stay in the same kind of shape. I don't know, but I know he was winning in the third round, I mean Camaro, that if that was a 5 fight who knows how the, that fight would have went you know it's not enough time, not enough time to get a guy like that to prepare for um Camaro, ought to prepare for Hamad, at least we got a chance to see what Hamad looks like against a world class world championship caliber fighter, so this was a big one, this is Robert Whitaker, with plenty of time to prepare the guy who is just as legit as they get top comments, Hill is going to be so upset when it gets done, he'll never have a sweet dream again. All that go talk and DJ still getting disrespect Ed, even Tyron, got a screenshot lol. Izzy became the dude he said Poem was resting on one win over Paja, saying I'd beat that man once lol. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it remember to leave a like subscribe and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos.